theoretically, your offenses are built around these heliocentric structures, and they are at the top of the league in offensive load, basically, right? So you would think they're very similar, but I feel like between using Luka in the post, getting Luka off ball a little bit, but having him flow back into on-ball actions and things that you just mentioned, and then even the way they like to run their pick and rolls in Dallas, where... As an example, you'll have a guy in the dunker spot and then he'll sprint out of the dunker spot, almost like a Spain pick and roll, like like the pick and roll is happening up top and the guy in the dunker spot, instead of staying and spacing there as an option for a lob or a lay down pass or something, he'll sprint right up through the middle of the paint out to the three point line. That stuff creates confusion in the defense. That stuff changes sort of how defenders play you, and it also changes how dangerous off-ball players are. And that's what's jumped out to me about watching the Mavs and then watching the Hawks and just kind of going back and forth a lot in the last few days watching them. It's like Atlanta runs a lot of stationary stuff. They like to run pick and roll. Now they've got DeJounte Murray. So you have Trey and DeJounte Murray, and they almost literally take turns. Like one of them will stand in the corner, and they the way they have it set up is it's very like... I I mean, at this point, it goes back to my conversation with Mike Prada. It's very passe. It's very like 2017. They're like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put three guys behind the three-point line, and we're going to run spread pick and roll with Trey Young. It's like defenses know how to defend that pretty well relative to where a league average half-court offensive possession is. So, yeah, I like I like everything I'm seeing in Dallas. I feel like... Luca is continuing to evolve as a player. The footwork in the post, the fadeaway, the way he's using his body. And this is all being blended into the offense and the personnel. Whereas a situation like in Atlanta, it, it feels more stagnant. It feels, it feels like there hasn't been as much growth. It feels like, and we can get into the Hawks offense if you want, but it's like it, the, it, doesn't, it doesn't maximize the roster that's set up uh, in the best possible way. It feels like there's two different offensive playbooks. Like there's like the the Trey leading the offense offensive playbook and then the DeJounte Murray. So like Trey, he still has his double drag screens. Like this is a very common action he's been running, running, ran it a lot last year, previous years. He comes down, two bigs immediately come up and then maybe Capella dives or Collins dives and Collins might pop while Capella's diving. Either way, it gets it gets Trey going to a space where he gets to take a pull-up jumper. It gets bigs going down where Trey's able to hit them for a lob. It, it's a great uh, type of possession for Trey, but DeJounte Murray relegated to the corner. Go over there. Stay and watch he, this happen. He's literally standing. He's just standing in the corner. Yeah. Like, like, and again, it goes back to a couple episodes ago with Mike Prado, where he was talking about the subtle but meaningful difference between standing in the corner and, you know, as an action's happening, lifting up and moving 10 feet or uh, a little back cut possibility or maybe the two guys are setting screens just just anything but we're literally talking about possessions where they just stand in place as the pick and roll happens and yeah that's that's the thing especially with Trey Young like DeJounte Murray doesn't quite run the same double drag sorts of actions but the point is when DeJounte has it he's creating Trey is almost quite literally completely stationary in the corner which is like you know someone might be listening and being like well isn't that good Trey Young's a great like catch and shoot shooter maybe maybe not this year he's not but Ideally, Trey Young's a great catch and shoot shooter, so he's adding some value there. But he's not adding value beyond somebody that could just like generally shoot. You're not adding value from his incredible quickness, from his maybe, you know, top 99th percentile passing ability in the league right now. So if he's just standing there, you're completely taking away like 90% of his actual effectiveness. And you can even see like there are elements, there are times when Trey Young actually shows off, he can be a bit more uh, creative. I think there was a play, I think it was against the Bucks, where he's in the corner. And he's being defended pretty well. It might be Javon Carter that's defending him at that point. And he back cuts, gets the catch, draws Brooke Lopez coming in, and throws this beautiful dump off pass for a dunk, right? And so it's like, this is what Trey Young brings to the table. His ability to draw defenders, find open players for easy shots, and just use his incredible quickness. And if he's just standing in the corner, he brings literally none of that to the table. That that play, you're talking about he started off ball in that play, if I remember Yeah, he started correctly. off ball. He's in yeah. the corner. Yeah. Well, what what jumped out to me about that play is how long it took to sort of activate him as a weapon. I can't remember who the the teammate was. I think it was a big 
who had the ball and was looking to like reset into something, and he finally dribbles it toward Trey. And that's a very common action in the NBA where you have one player in the corner and you have a ball handler and you dribble at the player in the corner and he can come up and catch a, D, uh, a handoff and curl around you um, or he can backdoor. But it just kind of like, even that was like, now we're going to wait. We're standing, we're standing, we're standing. And then finally it's like, okay, all right, I'll, I'll run this. And oh, I feel a little back cut opportunity. He's not, to me, He's not super active or much of a threat as a cutter or a screener. And then the other little thing off ball that I'm, I'm a, a little more attentive to, I don't, I don't, I got to keep an eye on it. I don't know how, I don't know how consistent it'll be, but what I've seen so far is the, the catch for Trey Young is a slow process. He, he's not catching and, and attacking as he catches the ball. In other, in other words, he's not a slasher right? He's not what we talked about with Zion Williamson earlier in the season. Like he's not catching it and going on the move. So that's another element of being off ball where they'll run actions with both Trey and DeJounte on the court. It might start with Trey. He might flip it to Murray. Murray's the one getting the screen. And then Murray realizes like, oh, the defense has shifted over. I want to swing it to the other side and punish them. Swings it to the other side and Trey catches it. And then Trey's like, catching it and and he's like well you know actually what we should do is run some pick and roll instead of catching it and attacking that in mic- that micro advantage somehow so it it, it feels like it's kind of like you look at dallas and you're like oh they're optimizing all the pieces and you look at the hawks and you're like there's a lot of there's a lot of talent and good players on this team but it's it it doesn't fit in the the best way possible it seems yeah, I think actually a great contrast to this is way earlier in the season when James Harden was healthy. The What the Sixers were able to do is they load up on one side and they have Harden and Embiid doing some kind of action. So the, the defense is completely shifted that way. And then you have Maxi on the weak side. You swing it, you reverse it to him. And in the chaos of the defense trying to rotate back, Maxi's just like, bam! Like he just explodes. He's so good at going right off that catch. And it's the exact opposite. It's like, it's like you know, when you're on a trampoline and you're trying to like bounce your friend as high as possible because you have three people... If you, like, time it perfectly, and as soon as everyone hits the trampoline and you, like, bounce, you explode. But if everyone just, like, stopped right at that point and didn't actually jump, everything just, like, resets, and you don't get anything out of it. So, like, Trey Young is just, like, landing on the trampoline without giving that extra jump. It's all that wasted potential energy. That's exactly it. Do you have some trampolining uh, tips that you you could give us? Were you a big trampoliner? I, I wouldn't say a big trampoliner, but, like, I've, I've done my fair share of trampolining in my day. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.